hi. I, it's good to see you. I'm here speaking with Lior Biran, a supervisor, a clinical psychologist, and a member of the Israeli ACT Center, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, working at the Shalvata Mental Health Clinic. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Shalvata Mental Health Center, uh, the outpatient, the uh, adult outpatient clinic in, in uh, this mental health center. Wonderful. Yeah, and, and, and Lior, um, it's so good to talk to you because uh, I know we met, uh, I guess, just through chatting uh, a little while ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, I came across your work with the ACT Matrix and really was interested in the things that you were doing with the Matrix and, and noticed that you have um, even a course that you've put together, which we'll talk about uh, later on today. But uh, I just really, really wanted to kind of get to know you better and get to know your work. So thank you very much for uh, meeting with me on this call. Thank you for having me. It's a, it's a good opportunity for me to, to know you a little better. And I also saw your uh, massive work around Matrix, uh, the Act Matrix, and was very, very, very impressed. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Um, well, why don't we, why don't we kind of, uh, you know, get to know you a little bit better. Um, I'm curious just to get a little bit about your background, you know, the kind of work that you do, the kinds of clients that you see, just kind of the setting that you work at, things like that. Mm -hmm. I work in uh, two main settings, one of which is uh, in the mental health cent center um, in the outpatient clinic. There I see like a more complicated um, I don't like the word cases, like more complicated interactions with, with clients, uh, clients that are uh, some of them uh, after uh, hospitalization or uh, suffering from uh, or diagnosed with um, like more severe mental illness um, mm -hmm. tags. And I also work in a private clinic, uh, which there is, it's more like soft or uh, uh, different different kind of, of interactions that I have there. So this is my two main setting, uh, main uh, therapeutic settings. Yeah, yeah. And um, so it's outpatient, you're, you're getting people who are kind of coming into scheduling, and then you also have mm -hmm. these more uh, complex cases, people coming from mm -hmm. post hospitalization, things like that. Some of them, yeah, some of them, it's really, really um, diverse. And, uh, you know, you yeah. see a lot of people, a lot of kinds of people. Interesting. Okay. And and how did you get started in the field in the first place, like the field of mental health? I started I started um, studying my bachelor bachelor degree in 1999. Uh, it's quite a long time ago, I think. It's all, all uh, reminding me of the years, <laughs> you know. Um, started uh, um, my master's degree in uh, like something like 20 years ago and in israel when you start your master's degree you start your uh, clinical practice in, in the field like field uh, uh, supervision and um, 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 like tr starting to seeing seeing uh, real clients not only reading about it or uh, sure. Uh, watching other people do it, uh, and I started. I'm from then. I'm in the in the same place, Shalvata. It, it was the place that I was also a student in. So uh, it's like um, 20 years. I'm in mental health, practicing mental health uh, care, and uh, from the start, I was. Um, um, studying uh, in a psychodynamic approach. This was my main uh, theory and approach of working with, uh, Chalvata was and still place of a psychodynamic um, practice. Mm -hmm. So I was there, I did my internship there it, uh, another four years and I studied in like a, a school of uh, psychoanalytic, psychodynamic psychotherapy. So I was really into um, Winnicott, Klein, Dion, and all those, uh, and all this bunch. But uh, in some point, I also um, ran into mindfulness practice and MBCT as an mm -hmm. approach. And um, 
I had a little uh, familiarity with ACT from my uh, master's degree. So I think like something around 10 years ago, nine, 10 years ago, I started practicing uh, mindfulness in my uh, clinical work and my private life. And from there, I started uh, going into ACT more and more, like from the mindfulness uh, door, I came into sure. it. And through the years, I, I went more and more into the behavioral uh, and roots. And now I, I, I see myself more as a behaviorist uh, therapist mm -hmm. and less as a psychodynamic one. Yeah. That's interesting because I was just uh, on an interview with Nathaniel Chua from the Philippines, and his trajectory is almost identical to yours, um, starting out with a psychodynamic uh, area and then learning more and more about mindfulness and, and practicing mindfulness and then learning act through that, that gateway. Um, it's really interesting how that seems to be the trajectory for people who don't start right away with ACT, right? They, they, they come from some other modality. They are, 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 are experimenting with the mind, mindfulness work, and then they kind of just snowball, or, or one thing leads to the next, and then they, they find ACT. So that, that's interesting. I found, uh, as a matter of fact, I found ACT in the beginning of my... Uh, um... So as of my training as a student, as an MA student, uh, I worked in um, in the university uh, clinic. Uh, students came there, and there was one student that came there and and specifically asked for CBT for anxiety. Mm -hmm. And twenty years ago, in this uh, specific clinic, there was no CBT, only psychodynamic uh, therapy which is still the main thing in Israel. Like the mainstream uh, psychology is psychodynamic, not CBT or not ACT or behavior. Okay. And then uh, it was uh, 20 years ago, 2002. She asked for CBT and somehow they, they um, gave her to me or gave me to her and, and yeah. I was her therapist. And I told her, I don't, I don't know anything about uh, CBT. I, I'm a psychodynamic uh, therapist. But I, have, I had a supervisor in the university who said, look, I, I get that you're not into CBT so much, but there is a acceptance and commitment therapy. It's something new that I read about. He gave me the book, the 99 wow. book. And I, I read it very clumsily. I didn't understand half of it. And I, I did with her some kind of a version of this book. Yeah. Uh, and then I came back to it like 10 or 12 years later. Uh, and, you know, I had like a fond memory of this game we played together, which wasn't an act therapy at all, but it was like my first uh, encounter with act. That's so cool. That's, that's amazing. Um, I remember even in my master's program, which is which is um, 2011, 2012, when I was in my master's program, mm -hmm. I, I am from a, a, a central Texas. And at that time, there was really no ACT people. It was sort of an ACT dead zone, an ACT desert. Mm -hmm. And my university, they, hadn't, they had no knowledge of ACT. They didn't train me in ACT. Uh, they hadn't heard about it. And I recall reading about it on my own. And I even asked some of my professors, like, can I, can I start doing this? Or can I, can I write a paper about this? And they were like, no, <laughs> they said, no, pick something else, do, do something else. It's just not, you know, um, and this was 2012. And so, uh, definitely kind of see, see where you're coming from there. Right. It's not every place is as well versed in, 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 well, in uh, lots of things, but in, especially in these new up and coming mm -hmm. therapeutic modalities, uh, even in the United States, right? Uh, there's tons of places that where where you talk to the local other therapists there, and they have no idea mm -hmm. what something like ACT is or, or whatever. Most of us do traditional CBT though mm -hmm. here in the U.S. Yeah. So I, I don't ha I don't really have a background with traditional CBT. Mm -hmm. I have yeah. like a background with psychodynamic therapy and then mindfulness and acts. Yeah. 
Well, that's that's wonderful. And, and and I'm curious too. What about the Matrix? How did you first stumble on the Matrix within ACT? I try to I try to to remember how I, how I stumbled into it. I think it was like in a, um, a series that maybe Praxis had. I'm not sure of webinars that uh, uh, Tim Gordon led, sure. and he he interviewed or uh, uh, hosted uh, Kevin Polk. Oh, and okay. then yeah. I think I met the Matrix from for the first time there, and I heard about it. I heard about the Matrix, and uh, so I bought the the book, the twenty sixteen book, I think, the the off white one, you know, with the essential the, guide, the Act Matrix, yeah, essential yeah. guide, the Act Matrix, and I read it like uh, chapter by chapter, mm -hmm. and very uh, was very much intrigued by it, and it was very. It was mind blowing, I think, for me to um, to encounter this very simple way of uh, um, conceptualizing um, behavior mm -hmm. and, um, and making it transparent to the client. You know, not not something that I keep in my head, but I can share it very easily with the client. And as, as simple it is, it is also complex and um, deep and, and hold a lot of RFT notions and uh, functional contextualism. It was yeah. very, very interesting and exciting for me. So I read the book and then I, um, I watched a bit of uh, Kevin Polk's um, webinars. Mm -hmm. And I tried, I started trying it out with people, you know, with with my family and with the friends and with my colleagues and with my uh, supervisees and with my supervisors and with my and yeah. with my clients so it was like a, a period of time that i i did the metrics with everyone i met in in every context and from from uh, matrix to matrix to matrix i started to be more fluent with it and started to understand you know, how I can use it or what I can do with it. Yeah, that, that's, that's, uh, I remember that time when that book came out. I was living in uh, a small, small town um, north of Dallas, and I was excited for that book, and I had purchased it on Amazon, the physical copy. Mm -hmm. And I was waiting for it to arrive, and I was watching the tracking, you know, I was tracking it. And then finally it came. So I, I ran to the mailbox <laughs> and I opened the mailbox and, and there was this package in there and it was kind of like lumpy and it was supposed to be the book. And I opened it and it was a, a container of lotion that, that I didn't buy. They, they had sent me the wrong package accidentally. So uh, everybody else got the book on that first day and I had to wait. I had to, I had to wait for them to send it to me again. <laughs> but you, had, uh, you had your lotion to, to... That's right, I had my lotion to, to comfort me. <laughs> um, but it, it's interesting, right? Because that book came out in 2015 or 2016, and the original Act Matrix book, the blue one, yeah. that was, what, 2009 or 10? Mm -hmm. So there was this big gap where there was just no written Matrix content, you know, not very much. And I recall before the, the Central Guide came out, before I knew that it was coming out, I was like, well, somebody needs to write. Somebody needs to write like an actual guide to the matrix, right? Because the, the blue book was more like, here are all the different ways people use the matrix. Like each chapter was different. But I was really hoping somebody was going to write like a step-by-step -step guide. Yeah. And if nobody was going to do it, I was going to do it. And I even started kind of taking notes and writing out some ideas. And then I, and then I heard about the, the essential guide coming out. And then I was like, oh, good. Um, they did it for me you know i don't have to i don't have to actually do the whole thing myself mm -hmm. um, and they, they did a really good job that I book think. is is nice i remember reading it the first time and i was like wow like wow this is really good and then i recall every time i read it again like if i go back to it and i and i look at a chapter i always learn something new mm -hmm. that i that i didn't you know notice the first time yeah so it's a really good book and i also love how multi um th there's multiple viewpoints in that book 
because mm-hmm. there's several different authors, right? It's not just Kevin's voice. It's, it's Benji's mm-hmm. voice too, and Fabian's voice, and um, uh, Mark Webster's voice is in mm-hmm. that book too. And you can really tell the difference between like, you know, the, them combining their, their thoughts into this book, which I think is useful. Uh, because a lot of the Matrix content, you're right, a lot of people get through the Matrix, get to the Matrix through Kevin Polk, which is understandable, right? Because he mm-hmm. had a lot of content, mm-hmm. especially at that time. Uh, but I'm always wary of, of learning something just from one person, you know, over and over and over again. I want to be able to learn things from multiple people. And so that book was a great way of doing that. Um, so cool. So you started using it with clients. You started using it with people and on yourself, I assume, right? Yeah, uh-huh. and noticing noticing how powerful it was, and is it still part of your your daily practice today? Like, do you do it with every client or, or most clients? Most clients, yeah, most clients. I'm not I'm not a, a, a matrix guy. Uh, you know, I'm doing only the matrix. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I use it, but I I use it a lot. I think I don't think I have clients that I didn't do a matrix with, and uh, I usually do it like on the um, and start doing it on the second or third uh, um, meeting mm-hmm. and then go with it for a few weeks and then I, I leave it and sure. I go back to it like when stuff uh, when I want to uh, like do a functional analysis of something the metric really helps me to do it with the clients and not you know to the clients or uh, above the head of the clients mm-hmm. So I, I think most or even all of my clients meet the matrix somewhere some in the beginning of our, uh, at some point, but to, uh, early on. on our, sure. uh, um, yeah, I think that's a good way of doing it. That's similar to what I do. Uh, I think I think you know that I, I do it usually in the intake. So it's part of my intake process, mostly because I'm in private practice now. And when you're in private practice and you work for yourself, it's easier to do, you know, I don't have lots and lots of paperwork that I have to do in the beginning or lots of assessments that I have to do the first session. So I have the room to do it. If I, if I don't get, get to it in the first session, then I definitely do it in session two. And then, like you said, I don't, I don't use it every session. So I think a lot of people see my work and think, well, he just does the matrix every day, all, all, all the time. I don't, I, I, sometimes I will just do it once with a client in the intake and that's how we set goals. Uh, for the treatment and, and just kind of um, therapeutic alignment. And then we never really look at it again. I'm kind of using it in the background. Mm-hmm. For some clients, we do bring it out uh, multiple times. And then, and then most of the time, just kind of doing it verbally, you know, not 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 looking at the diagram too much anymore. Although I, although I do want to start um, having it more present in the, in the room, because I do think that the visual or the spatial element of the matrix is important and that's that is a, a difference than some other tools that are out there mm-hmm. um, yeah. which i've written about a little bit but but excellent so you've uh you know you got it down oh, but i'm also curious right because uh do you do the majority of your work in hebrew all of my work all of your work is in hebrew yeah. right yeah. and so with with you know translating a, a tool to another language are there any modifications or or changes to the matrix that you had to make just because of the language? Uh, at the beginning, I, I was really uh, messing around with the, the, the yucky stuff inside Kevin Polk, yeah. <laughs> which it really doesn't translate good to Hebrew Yeah, because we don't have yucky. Uh, so I tried all sorts of words and in, at some point I left it. I, I, I said like, the stuff inside that holds you back or uh, sticks you or uh, sure. um, like holds you. Yes. Without uh, uh, without uh, saying yucky or uh, um, yeah, no yucky. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually the same. So I know Kevin is is fond of the yucky stuff, which is a recent development of of his. You know, he didn't always yeah. do that, and I, I I I've never really used it. I it's hard for me to do that I, I think some even in english i think some therapists can get away with it <laughs> and some therapists can't right like if i if i'm like what's your what's the yucky stuff that shows up on the inside i think that sometimes people would be like what are you talking about like um 
that's my own mind kind of getting getting in my way. I think Kevin can get away with it very easily because he's like a jovial old man. You know, he's got that jolly attitude. Mm -hmm. And so people are like, yeah, whatever you say. Um, but for me, I usually do similar to you. I say something like, you know, what, what, are, what are some things that, that show up to, that kind of get you stuck or yeah. uh, can get in the way of what you want? Or I think, I think most of the time now I, I, I say things, something, something along the lines of stuck gets me stuck or getting me mm -hmm. stuck, things like that. And so you've, you've adjusted that word a little bit there. Um, I noticed too. Um, well, actually, let me, let me, let me back up. I, I know you have a course and I, I took your course or at least I'm, I'm taking it. It's in Hebrew. So I'm, I'm understanding a little bit, a little bit mm -hmm. there. Um, Kevin and I have both changed the horizontal line of the matrix. So now Kevin, instead of doing toward and away, Kevin is doing, uh, satisfaction and relief yeah and then on my end i do survival and vital uh, and i don't do that all the time I, in fact I, I i usually introduce the matrix with toward and away and then i switch to survival and vital at a certain point um i think i noticed that you've experimented with some of that as well what are your thoughts on just kind of those adjustments that people have made to the horizontal line yeah, I experimented with it. I experimented with the, the order of the question. I experimented with the horizontal line. And then I saw your uh, interview with uh, Marcel Tessara in the Root of Fruits um, yeah. podcast. And th I think there was my first encounter with the vital uh, survival uh, uh, conceptualization. Mm -hmm. And I, I started trying it. The relief and satisfaction I knew already. I think that I saw Kevin Polk talk about it some years ago already. Not as a as a substitute for a towards a way, but as like the consequences of towards a way. Yes. Yeah, when you go away, you feel, uh, you do it when a way move, you feel uh, relief. And when you do it works will move you feel satisfaction and i tried it a bit it's nice i think it's very validating the, mm -hmm. the relief the relief uh, part you know when people say ah okay i'm not just doing it it has an impact on me but and then i tried the the vital survival your your uh, suggestion, sure. suggestion and i think it's very smart and i think it's really it, it it's another layer to the matrix. So I'm doing it since I uh, since I uh, met your work. I'm doing it like all of the time, like you yeah, like you say. First, firstly, I say two words and away, and then I suggest to add, yeah. not not to replace, but add survival and um, uh, and uh, sorry, vital. vital. Yeah. I think I do the same and in the way I, I think clients really understand it. They, they understand that idea of trying to, trying to survive or just trying to get through something. And then that other idea of vital is harder to understand, but, but there is that sense of like, there's a vitality that, that, that I can contact. Yeah. Because um, when you ask clients, how do you feel when you do this towards move, mm -hmm. what happens then? And most people don't know to, uh, to tag it with a word they say something like uh, they very physically uh, demonstrate mm -hmm. uh, expansion of uh, expansion of the uh, chest you know so it, yes i think the vital word is really um giving it an, another context verbal context yeah. to this this feeling <laughs> it's it's wonderful i recall the the exact moment that i like, came across those two words because i was I think I was experimenting with a few different options. This must have been 2016 or 2015. And um, I think it's a Demi Lovato song. I don't know mm -hmm. if you have Demi Lovato over there. <laughs> I know the name, Demi, but I'm not. It's uh, either Demi Lovato or Ariana Grande. I think it's Demi Lovato, though. Um, they have a song uh, called Survival or something like that. And, mm -hmm. and, and it, one of the chorus or, uh, lines in that song is, it, it's, it's much more than survival. Um, and I, I think they might even use the word vital in that song. Um, but, but just that idea of it's, it's much more than survival, like it clicked for me right then. And I was like, whoa, 
and I, and I experimented with the with the line there, and I put survival on one end, and I was thinking, you know, what is on the other side? And I, I had that idea of vitality too, and um, right away it started to click for me, and I started to use it, and <clears throat> found it to be useful. It, originally, I was like, well, I, I could use this for trauma work, right? Uh, and I, I even on my website, I wrote it as, you know, this is specific for trauma use cases. But then I started to realize that you really can use it for anybody mm-hmm. um, outside of that. Yeah, so, and a, lo- a lot of our cl- of a lot of our clients are uh, are uh, trauma trauma survivors. Right. Yeah, it's, it's really common. Sadly. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, so I want to I want to get I want you to uh, get a chance to talk about your course too, because um, for people that don't know, Lior has a ACT Matrix course, which is basically like how to use that ACT Matrix from A to Z. You know, everything you need to know about the ACT Matrix is actually better than my course. I wish I had made your course instead of the one that I made. Uh, it's so well put together. The, the outline is perfect. The videos are just a genius. Um, the, only, the only problem for my audience is that, that it's in Hebrew. So a lot of people that follow me probably won't be able to take it. But mm-hmm. if you do know Hebrew, please take Lior's course. Don't take my course. Um, tell me more about like, how you... Put together that course and, and just kind of the, the process of making it because i know mine took like a year for me to make it from the beginning to end yeah so I, mine took less but i think it was v- with a very uh, high toll on my life yeah it was like it i i think it's the closest that i get to understand what manic episode is about oh yeah <laughs> doing this course yeah it was like it was really fun and, uh, you know, vital. I know what vitality is because when I did this course, I felt like I was um, getting up early in mo- early mornings, want to get out of bed and go and record. Like every a minute I had was dedicated to this course. Wow. I started with, I started a long time before the course wanting to uh, do uh, uh, an online course of some sort mm-hmm. and a lot of time I thought it will be like some a basic act course in Hebrew which we we don't we don't have I think uh, yet in Israel some online you know like uh, uh, your pace online uh, yeah. act basic course and then I I thought, what maybe I should do the matrix because I, I have an, uh, I have experience with the matrix and uh, I love it and I like it and I, I I think I can I can give something here that it, that no one else uh, is giving. So I started by um, um, posting um, a Facebook ad in a, mm-hmm. in a community of act therapists here in Israel. Uh, there is like a Facebook group of something like 1500, I think, therapists. Wow. Yeah, the, a lot of uh, act is really uh, uh, expanding here in Israel. Mm-hmm. So we are like in a very good spot now. I think the Israeli act, the ACBS chapter, is the the quickest growing one uh, on the, in the two, three years, the last two, yeah. three years. So we are uh, expanding. Which is uh, what's happening? What's happening with Act in Israel now? So, I posted this um, like ad, yeah, like a, um, uh, offered people to play, play role play with me. Sure. Uh, some therapeutic um, hours using yeah. the metrics, and like in ten minutes or fifteen minutes or half an hour, I got uh, eight volunteers or something like that. I said, okay, now I, now I have to do it because That's I thought awesome. that maybe no one will uh, no one will want to do it. But I had like very quickly a lot of volunteers, and then what I did, I just recorded sessions with them, mm-hmm. and like first session, second session, third session, um, supervising session. Yeah, I I, I experimented with it. I, we I like one uh, one uh, psychologist came and and and. Uh, brought a, a client of her to uh, consult about, and we made the metrics 
like a, a conceptualization of uh, of the case conceptualization and i tried like working with the matrix in like in effect uh, model like mm -hmm. one one uh, one meeting and trying to uh, getting the most of, out of it yeah uh, and after i record all of this i have i think like eight full sessions therapeutic sessions uh, I built the course around it, mm -hmm. and from doing the first, second meeting, I ended up with talking about the effect and talking about uh, uh, RST and clinical RST and the basic X and the X of X. And uh, I couldn't yeah. stop. In some, in, at some point, I think it was really <laughs> very close to being full, full blown manic episode. And then it took me, I think something around two or three months to arrange all of this um, course and, and put it uh, online. That's amazing. It's, it's so well put together. The, the platform that you're using to host the content is also very slick. It's, it's very beautiful to the eye. Thank and you um, just, a, just an amazing work that you've done. I uh, hope that you can continue doing other things like that. Um, because they're 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 really powerful, uh, and so good job, good job on that one. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, uh, the the course is is great. I love how you just kind of asked people to to volunteer and and you did it right. A lot of those um, sessions are really really cool, from what I can understand of them. Yeah, um, it's really nice that you uh, you know I, it's. Admirable, ad, admirable that you are so into it and you're uh, um, taking a time to look at the uh, sessions in the, a language that you don't understand. <laughs> and it really, it's really, curi I'm curious about you watching, I, I should try it also, watching a uh, therapeutic uh, discourse in, in, in unknown language. I think it's like, uh, talking about diffusion, you know, it's the ultimate mm -hmm. one. And what? And it's really. Uh, I'm curious about what you get there. What? You, what? What? How? How you impress from uh, sessions that you don't understand a word? Yeah, I think it's easier watching your sessions because there is the matrix involved. So there's yeah. something for me to kind of anchor myself mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. If I was just watching two people do just just talking right with no visual element at all it probably would be much harder to to really understand what's happening and, and to kind of get a sense of it but i also think that you know it, it's it it sort of it, it points towards the the commonalities that we all have as human beings yeah. that there are certain things that that all of us are experiencing and certain facial features and things like that that mm -hmm. are very common across every culture and if you recall, I think it was not, it might, it might have been 2020 or 2021 ACBS conference that was all virtual. Mm -hmm. One of the sessions was the, um, uh, a couple of a couple of people, I can't remember the names anymore, but Michael May, I think might have been who it was. And part of that training, that workshop was watching a client session with the audio off. So no sound mm -hmm. at all. Okay. So just watching the, the visual, like how the, the therapist and the client are, are moving and interacting with each other, even though they were just sitting in chairs, you know, or actually it was a Zoom session too, so yes. it was just the faces. Mm -hmm. And then trying to understand sort of the function that's happening, like the, the transformation of function and what is the um, appetitive and aversive happening in that room, just with your eyes and not with mm -hmm. your ears. Mm -hmm. And so that course was, I mean, that, that workshop was really cool. And so it's the yeah. same thing, right? Like it's a cool exercise, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, taking out the, the language, which may interfere and, and be sticky and seeing only the music and the facial expressions mm -hmm. and the movement, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. So maybe you're right. Maybe that is a, a cool way of, of learning um, that, that, you know, people haven't really utilized yet. Um, so, you know, maybe we can do some good work together in the future, setting something up like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, actually, that's part of the reason why I wanted to do these kinds of interviews is um, 
you know, I've got interviews lined up with people from all over the world who use the matrix and, and are working in this way and just noticing a lot of the similarities and, and, and just the, the universal kind of quality of it. Um, I think there's a lot of, uh, future here for, for, for people who use the matrix. I think we got to stick together, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, it'd be nice to kind of put together some kind of package or something like that, that kind of demonstrates the, you know, ch -ch -ch, helps mm -hmm. people understand the, the quality of it. Yeah. So that's cool. Um, and so t let's talk a little bit more about just kind of the, you know, being in Israel, working in, in the, in the, the clinic that you're in, the center that you're in. Mm -hmm. um, what what is the mental health field like in Israel? Like uh, attitudes towards mental health and access to mental health services, things like that. Yeah, I, I think the attitude towards mental health is getting better and better through the years. I I think that it's much less less uh, stereotypic now to go to therapy, for sure in a private practice, maybe. Mm -hmm going into mental health services centers, like uh, public centers, mm -hmm. still, is still very um, stigmatized, but, but a lot less than, than it was. I think COVID also um, shuffled all of the things around. So uh, um, I think so many people met um, pain and suffering, and, mm -hmm. and mental suffering, uh, and and you can see it in uh, like demand for mental health services uh, post COVID or end of mm -hmm. COVID or mm -hmm. the stage we are in with this uh, pandemic. I'm not sure what to call it. End of COVID, post COVID, yeah. mid COVID, mid -COVID. something. COVID. Like that. <laughs> yeah. So people. People are wanting wanting more services more more open to to reaching out and requesting services. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that pri private practices in Israel now is like um, is jammed. A lot of people mm -hmm. are uh, looking for um, help, professional help, and sadly, I think that the, the field is can't handle it. Yeah. Like, um, um, more demand that uh, that uh, people can uh, address. Yeah, I think it's the same almost everywhere on the planet. Um, mm -hmm. the, yeah, at, at some places, you know, I've lived in big cities where there's just tons of therapists, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, thousands of therapists, yet somehow everybody's full. Yeah. You know, somehow there's still more clients than there are therapists. Yeah. I remember even living in small towns. I've lived in tiny towns where, you know, we're the only mental health service in the entire county, or the entire three counties. Mm -hmm. And and we're we're seeing clients coming in and coming in and coming in, and we're thinking, where are these people coming from? Like, how how can the population be this small, yet the need for services is this big? Right? It's like it's disproportionate almost to the to what yeah. you would think the, yeah. the statistics are. Right. Um, but I think it it is in in you know in accord with the statistics because the statistics mm -hmm. are talking about um, a lot of percentage you know a high percentage of people that need need professional help. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think what's happening is just more people are seeking it out, right? A lot of people were just suffering at home. Yeah. <clears throat> without without actually reaching out and getting uh, services. So that's, you know, I, I'm going to ask you about the, what you think of the future of psychotherapy is, but I think my view is it's, it's only going to increase, right? Like this demand, I think it's, it's being driven not only by, you know, whatever, whatever we would think is the, the normal factors that contribute to uh, psychological uh, concerns or problems. Mm -hmm. I think, I think also just sort of the state of the world and, and just like the, the feeling of kind of doom <laughs> that's out there for a lot of people. Doom uh, and loneliness. Loneliness, very, yeah. Very, very uh, disturbing loneliness. And then here, you know, even in the United States, of course, I mean, I'm sure you've noticed on the news, things are not good in the United States right now. There's a very real sense of, like, I'm not sure what's going to happen 
mm-hmm. 20 years from now. I'm not, I don't know if there's going to be a United States 20 years from now, <laughs> or maybe even five or 10 years from now. Um, that's weighing on people very heavily yeah. here. Um, and then, of course, things going on in Europe and, and uh, you know, the war in Ukraine and things like that. Um, there's just so much yeah. happening with climate change. The ecological crisis, the political mm-hmm. crisis, the um, polarization of society. Yeah, big, big, big stuff. Yeah. And the mind, the mind can do a, a lot of uh, um, like um, doom, doom. Uh, pessimism yeah watching it at no future well you know it, in my view it's right our minds are so good at finding solutions right that's the thing we talk about uh, in act our mind is so good at finding solutions that when it's put up against a problem that seems so daunting and so unworkable that the solution is that the solution that it's going to find is always going to be well uh, throw it all away you know forget it then nothing mm-hmm. matters right yeah. if, if if the world is chaos then nothing matters and then nothing i do matters and therefore i'm gonna go shoot up a school or something like that right like um we don't have this, this thing in israel. don't have this thing in israel yeah yet as well i know you don't <laughs> I was, uh, uh, taught me to say yet yeah um here it's easy it's easy to do that because well for a few different reasons but I think that I think that is contributing. It's not just that people are being radicalized in some way. It's that people that are people are feeling hopeless mm-hmm. enough. They're feeling so hopeless and so 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 much that life doesn't have worth. Not just yeah. my own personal life, but like everything is 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 worthless, right? And there, it makes it easier to to apply damage to to the world. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, if you look at it matrix through the eyes of the matrix or uh, mm-hmm. uh, behaviorism, functional contextualism, you can you can see it uh, with more compassion regarding the uh, dead end of that people get to and like mm-hmm. uh, doing the only thing that they think they can under aver- aversive control. Yeah, and and damaging. Yeah, really other people and themselves. Well, that's my that's my pessimistic view, viewpoint of what the future looks like. What, what do you think? What do you see the future of psychotherapy going in? Just the future in, in general. So I, I think you know mindfulness really helped me to take a step back from uh, apocalyptic uh, mm-hmm. uh, thinking, which I I I was very good at. Uh, I think that some of the things that I I think act and mindfulness and uh, behaviorism helped me is to take this step back and. Uh, take a deep breath and and mm-hmm. bringing back balance, balance and curiosity regarding to what's happening now in the U.S. in Israel, where polarization and radicalization is here also. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that my view on things that I sh- I have to keep trying and. I think this is a part of the thing, part of the reasons that I'm still working in the public health uh, services here in Israel. And I didn't say it earlier, but it, it is important to say that Israel is or has a public mental health, mm. health services, uh, which is free for uh, all of all, all of the residents of citizens yeah. of Israel. So. It's, it is uh, not without the, its problems and it is uh, very uh, understaffed and under uh, budgetized and uh, not enough centers, not enough rooms, not enough therapists, not enough uh, wages. But we try to do the best we can with the list we have mm-hmm. uh, in order to provide uh, some good basic and mental health services to people that can't afford it or can afford it but want to get it from uh, the public uh, health system yeah very grateful for the work that you're doing and and uh you know uh glad that that you have that structure their infrastructure to do that even though it's not perfect yeah it's not and i try to bring behavioral thinking and functional contextualism into this uh, setting which is like my own uh, 
I don't know, uh, uh, missionary uh, mission, mm -hmm. my mission, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, to 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 bring act matrix uh, into the public health, the mental pu public mental health system, and I think the future. Um, the future, I don't think it's very different from the present, uh, in my view. I think that, you know, I worried a few years ago that we will be replaced by bots and uh, yes. apps and um, texting. And yep. uh, I think that COVID really um, uh, proved yep. that people need uh, the human contact in sitting in the same room with someone breathing the same air and you know and, and getting close to someone and and doing the therapeutic um work in in the relationship in the room yeah i'm not very fond of uh, zoom uh, sure. and uh, therapy also i think that i find it easiest to sit with someone in the room and see mm -hmm. his reactions and movements and uh, hear the voice, not through speakers, yeah, but, but, you know, directly. It is. It's much harder over Zoom for me to work. And it's it, at the end of the day, if I've done four or five Zoom sessions, at the end of the day, I'm just exhausted. Like my body is hurting. Yeah. And when I do four or five in-person sessions, I really don't have that same level of, of exhaustion or tiredness. Mm -hmm. So uh, five the Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I agree with you. I think I think a few years ago, five maybe five, ten years ago, I was thinking too that we were going to be replaced by bots or that a, a bot could do our job. And um, I, I agree with you. I, I don't see that that's happening. I think there is room for technology to support what we do, yeah. but not replace what we do uh, in a lot of really cool ways. You know, just helping clients track or notice what's going on for them. Uh, I think it's going to be powerful, a powerful use of technology. Um, Maybe I, I'll share with you that mm -hmm. I'm now working on, we are working on in, in my um, health organi organization, public health organization, which yeah. I'm uh, part of. It's called, Shalvata is part of uh, Klalit. It's like Klalit, it's, it's the um, insurance company, mental okay. health insurance, the health insurance provider and services provider. It's yeah. not only insuring people, it's also uh, giving them service. And we are trying now to build a program. I, I piloted with it. I, I, uh, maybe from there, I also got the idea, idea for a, a online uh, course because what we did, uh, it started during COVID. I, um, I recorded some uh, clips and mindfulness practices and wrote uh, like chapters or uh, uh, handouts. Yeah. People get at home to our website. They are, um, each day they have like a menu to uh, watch a film, watch a, a clip or uh, mm -hmm. practice uh, some mindfulness uh, practice and read something or uh, fill, fill out a form. And once a week, I see them in a in a group uh, setting, and they like uh, report or uh, share the things that they did mm -hmm. on their own in, a, in front of the computer at home, and then they get an, another uh, uh, another week of work, uh, self work, self uh, help work, you can say, sure. and they come back to another uh, group session which they support one another, and uh, we are like. Um, deepening our uh, um, um, understanding and uh, experience of act work. Yeah, yeah. Well, that sounds neat. Is that going to be, uh, is that still like in a beta testing or is it fully, yeah. fully released? It is really beta. I, I, okay. I, I, I like recorded it in, in my, uh, on my laptop, in my Zoom, uh, on uh -huh. my Zoom uh, app. And now uh, we got like a bit of a budget and we film, filmed it more professionally. Cool. So it, I hope it will be out like in two, three, four months uh, that people can use it. In yeah. Well, keep us updated on that. That's going to that's, that's gonna be really neat. And hopefully that can be a model for 
doing something similar in, in other languages and other mm -hmm. places. Um, good. Well, why don't we why don't we kind of tell people where they can or tell people where they can find you if they want to get connected with you or mm -hmm. uh, learn more about your work. So we have uh, like uh, the four of us and a group of uh, of uh, Israeli therapists. We have mm -hmm. uh, this uh, act, the the Israeli center or the Israeli act center. Mm -hmm. which you can uh, find online it's in hebrew so i'm speaking now for the hebrew speaking uh, audience yeah. i think yeah. uh, which i hope all of them know this website it is a act um i'll write it i maybe I'll, I'll send you the link we're gonna put a link we'll put a link in it with the video notes but it's i think it's it's act dash or a hyphen yeah. uh, it, uh, dash, dash il dash il dot, dot org Mm -hmm. And there, there, there are stuff that we do together. We teach together, and we have some online courses over there also. The metric is one of them. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, so um, that's how people can find more of your work. And if you're ever, uh, if you're ever down here, let me know. And of course, if I'm ever over there in Israel, I will let you know. Yeah, you're Maybe most you welcome here. Hang out together or something like that. <laughs> um, perfect. Well, thank you very much, uh, Lior. It was a pleasure talking to you about everything. Um, I really enjoy yeah. your work, again, like I said, and happy to see you be this kind of voice over there. And um, yeah, uh, keep in touch, right? Don't be a stranger. I will, I will. And I, I really and I really appreciate your work and your website and all of the things that you provide there is really, really helpful. And, and... Yeah, actually... Uh, just a side note for for all other listeners who are listening to this or watching this video. Let let me know if you're ever, um, you know, doing something uh, that 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 references my work or 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 um, you know, links back to my website because mm -hmm. I'd be happy to hear it. For, for example, I I find a lot of people who 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 have been referencing my work or using my work just through my own website analytics. Yeah. So I'm just keeping track of how many visitors I have on my, my website. And then all of a sudden I start seeing do dozens and dozens of people coming from, from uh, Israel. And I'm thinking, where are these people coming from? And I, I have to like trace it back myself. Mm -hmm. And then I find act-il.org and I'm like, whoa, they linked to my site. That's so awesome. Same thing happened with Italy. I was, I was seeing a bunch of people from Italy coming to my website and I was like, what's going on? And I, I, I followed it back and, there was a conference in Italy and somebody had uh, referenced my work and they were coming from the conference website. And mm -hmm. same thing with Israel again, ITA, the Israeli Therapist Association mm -hmm. yeah. had a yeah. conference and somebody there did some matrix stuff and they, they linked back to my website and I had to find out about it on my own. So I'm always happy. I'm always happy when people just say, Hey, Jacob, you know, here's this cool thing I did and, and I want to show it to you. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm I'm very pleased when that happens. So don't don't be shy to reach out to me uh, with something that you've done. Um, but good. Well, thank you, thank you so much, Liar. I really appreciate it. I'll be seeing you around. Actually, if if you're watching this video before September, Lior and I are going to do a live Q and A session about using the Matrix with clients, and we're gonna publish that uh it's going to be on facebook live i think mm -hmm. and then youtube also uh something like that where um you can ask us questions and we're going to be talking about the matrix um partly in english and partly in hebrew probably and so um we'll post the link to that down in the show notes and and, and remind y'all about uh joining that meeting in the future so join us there for that in early september okay well thank you very much um Take care of yourself. Have a good rest of the night. You too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.